The upcoming uh, thesis is going to be presented by Shomitra, a postgraduate student from Politecnico di Milano, located in Milan, Italy. The thesis, the title of the thesis is Exploring the Role of Nature in Boosting People's Mental Health in Bengaluru, India, guided by Fabiano Lenz de Oliveira, and it falls under the theme of urban landscape. Now, I would like to call upon Somitra and request her to start sharing her screen. Hello, good morning, Hello. everyone. Good afternoon for some, some people. And uh, actually, I'm a guy, so. Okay. Let me know when you see my screen. Yes. Yeah, your screen is visible, Somitra. Okay. Okay, so good afternoon to one and all present here. I am Somitra and I will be presenting my thesis titled Nature to Nurture, Exploring the Role of Nature in Boosting People's Mental Health in the Indian City of Bengaluru. This thesis project was submitted in May 2023 in the Sustainable Architecture and Landscape Design Department in the Politecnico di Milano, Italy. Let's start by answering the question, what actually is mental health? So according to WHO, it's a state of well-being in which the individual realizes his or her own abilities, can cope with the normal stresses of life, can work productively and fruitfully. In a nutshell, it's how we think, how we act and how we make conscious choices. Just like physical health, it's a vital part of our lives. Moving on to the state of mental health in India, the following images demonstrate the country's position in the world happiness rankings year after year and how the existing political situation is making it worse. In India, there are only three psychiatrists for every 100,000 people. This makes us think of our role as architects for the betterment of this drastic situation and brings us to the research question. That is, how can nature-based interventions bring about an improvement in people's mental health issues in the city of Bengaluru? The research methodology included intensive literature study to establish a relation between human and human well-being and nature which was followed by the design intervention distributed across three scales. So in the macro scale, it was focused on urban strategies and stakeholder involvement. In the meso scale, it was integrating farms and forests into neighborhoods. And in the micro scale, it was uh, focused on creation of a prototype urban space, which could be replicated in different parts of the city. Moving on to the human nature relationship, biophilia is defined as the innate connection that humans possess towards nature. And hence, nature affects us in the following ways. It helps us in reducing stress levels, it opens up our creative mind, it improves our cognitive skills, improves our mood, and improves the physical health. Uh, restoration has been defined as the process of mental recovery from fatigue. So restorative urbanism is a comparatively new concept that places mental health, wellness at the forefront of city planning and urban design. And it's an environment uh, in a setting that helps us regulate our emotions and recover from mental fatigue, stress, and demands of everyday life. The city chosen for these design interventions was Bengaluru. It was chosen since over the years it has become one of the most stressed cities of India and has slowly earned the name the suicide capital. With the emergence of the uh, IT industry, biggest IT industry in India, it is slowly becoming unlivable due to the absence of urban green blue amenities and uh, the natural de-stressors in a way, which is quite evident in the images, evolution images on the screen from 1973 to 2021, which showcases how the city has over the years lost its green cover. It went from being a garden city with dense green cover to, to being a city with dense concrete jungle now in the quest of being the Indian Silicon Valley. Uh, the chosen study area was Electronic City, this was chosen because uh, the city of Bengaluru has two IT parks. One is in Whitefield and the other emerging one is in Electronic City. But the city's expansion is planned to be along Electronic City area. And that's why it was chosen to be the study area. It is one of India's biggest IT parks and home to almost 200 IT companies. The analysis was done with respect to green, blue infrastructure, transport network and land use. On the periphery of the study area, uh, there are agricultural lands and forested lands, which serve as potential core areas for a prospective ecological corridor. But there is an absolute absence of green spaces in the core of electronic city where mostly all the residential and IT hub is located. Secondly, a lake network exists in the periphery, but in a really deplorable condition. 
because certain lakes are dried up, some are contaminated because of industrial waste and the canals have been completely neglected. Moving to the vision, macro scale intervention vision. The vision was divided into green and blue infrastructures. We start with the vision for the green plan by identification of focal points for intervention and major connections in the study area. By identifying major existing green areas around the study area and then developing primary access and secondary access for green connections, which were directed towards the identified focal points. The vision for blue infrastructure starts with identifying the major existing lakes around the study area, followed by the identification of secondary lakes, and finally developing blue connections from major lakes to smaller lakes through canals. Finally, the green-blue visions were combined to achieve a strategic green-blue master plan. It focuses on the creation of green connections from the existing um, agricultural and forest lands into the built infrastructure, as well as the creation of a blue connection through a lake and canal network. Lastly, buildings and streets were used as transition elements to connect the larger green areas with each other. Moving on to the mesoscale intervention, which was focused in the phase one of Electronic City, which includes main IT park and the residential areas around it. This vision started by identifying the major land use categories in the study area, which were residential, commercial and industrial. Then uh, creating a 15 minute walking radius from different focal points. So the all the areas accessible to pedestrians. Then creating green connections into the identified focal points from the strategic plan proposed in the macro scale intervention. And further extending the blue connections from the strategic plan in the macro scale intervention, which was followed by creation of primary green areas, secondary green areas and tertiary green areas. After creation of tertiary green areas, we get the holistic picture of the green blue infrastructure plan of the study area. It shows the continuation of strategies proposed in the macro scale into various types of urban green spaces. The periphery is occupied by reforested areas and farms, which is connected to smaller urban green areas like uh, parks, recreational grounds, private green areas. And the major streets serve the purpose of sewing these green areas together through linear corridors. Through the mesoscale intervention, the two axes of forested areas and farmlands have been connected from the outskirts of the city to the core built up areas. These axes along with lake networks give rise to different ecosystem and biodiversity networks, for example. Here we see an interaction between a forest and a lake ecosystem and the uh, diverse biodiversity network they embody. This is what it could look like. Likewise, here we see an interaction between a farm, lake and an urban park ecosystem and the biodiversity network around them. This is an example of the farm, lake, park ecosystem interaction. Finally, moving to the micro scale intervention, which was a prototype that could be replicated in different parts of the city. The site chosen for this design intervention falls in the core park core of the IT park of the electronic city, which is located in the heart of an uh, office building environment. It creates a platform for the implementation of strategies to counter workplace related stress. The conceptualization started by identifying the major building typologies around in order to understand the direction of flow of people. This was followed by um, identifying the major build, identifying the existing blue and green elements in the vicinity which was which was a ground and a lake called the Virasandra Lake. The next step was connecting the site with the farming and forest green access proposed in the meso scale plan, as well as extending the lake into the site through a canal. Then the site was divided into social zone based on the location of major office buildings here, a horticulture zone as a continuation of the farming access here and the uh, serene zone as a continuation of the forest access here. Then these zones were subdivided into smaller areas. And finally, the lake was extended into the site through a water body, which served the purpose of unifying as well as bifurcating the three zones. Combination of the zones with pedestrian connection across them painted the holistic picture of the design, which was this. So as shown in the conceptualization of forest and farm axis penetrate the site at the same point but diverge into two opposite directions, forming the horticulture and the serene zone. 
the social zone as an entry point from the north there by making it more accessible for the people coming from office buildings and the extension of Virasandra Lake as a canal in the site allows for interaction for water with water across all the three zones and therefore it acts like a binding element in the site. Uh, the social zone was placed in the master plan, master plan, keeping in mind the influx of people from surrounding office buildings. So on one side, the spaces are dedicated to social interaction and liveliness like the central plaza here. The PhDs shown on the screen are the, it means per, perceived sensory dimensions and it's the demands that people possess from a green space. So the central plaza uh, fulfills the demand of long and unobstructed views and serves as a point for congregation, provides space for interaction with water. While on the other side, there are spaces promoting playfulness and physical activity like the green gym and the play area. Next, the horticulture zone falls on the southern part of the site, which is the continuation of farming access. As said, it consists of small orchards, which provides people with activities like fruit picking, while the animal care center provides a therapeutic platform for human nature interaction and also creates opportunities for social interaction between people having pets. Finally, the serene zone focuses on a spiritual connection between humans and nature. It deals with sensorial elements like smell, sound, and vision. The landscape species in this zone have been carefully picked in order to activate the aforementioned senses. To conclude, a project like this would succeed in uh, a city like Bengaluru only with the participation of multiple stakeholders at multiple scales, which would, of course, include citizens. Also, the strategies proposed can be transposed to different Indian contexts, like different Indian metropolises like Delhi and Mumbai, dealing with the same issues of mental health amongst its citizens, of course, with small adjustments to suit the context. The implementation and realization of these strategies could play a major role in developing India into a mentally resilient nation, which is actually the need of the hour. Thank you for listening to me and thank you for providing this opportunity. Thank you, Somitra. Uh, it, was, it was a really insightful presentation and, I, and we like how you have dealt the issue of mental health and how you've implicated how its role, how nature has its role in boosting people's overall mental health. So now I'd like to call upon a panelist to this to insight their ideas and views on this work. Clara, would you like to go first? Yes, I can start. Thank you so much for your presentation. That was uh, again a really deep um, research and and clearly a lot of work put up. To, to generate this material. So thank you for summing it up in just 10 minutes, which is unbelievable. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's the first the first thing. Um, the second thing, I guess, is something from the very, very start of the presentation is just this idea of mental, mental health. Um, such a relevant issue and so connected to what we do as architects and landscape architects and very commonly underseen or just not in the central stage of the conversation, especially now that we're talking so heavily about climate change and resilience. Sometimes we kind of forget the aspect of what we do and its relation to human beings and to our well-being as, you know, single individuals and communities alike. Um, and I really appreciate that starting point. That's the first thing. I think you have a really big subject between your hands and, you know, there's lots of things to do in this realm that you've really kind of uh, got in that subject and gone all the way through your project trying to respond through that lens. Uh, you have a really clear research question and I think that's also a great starting point for any kind of research. I would say that I'm still missing a little bit of the connection, especially at the very end when you're showing the renders. And just because, you know, renders are so specific and they are telling the story and they can be, you know, we, in Spanish we say knives that have two sides, you know? And because I think all what you were saying somehow 
wasn't fully represented in the renders, but I could see them represented in the plan, which is such a, you know, underseen uh, piece of represent representation that we use in landscape and in architecture, because it leaves the person to fill in the blanks and to kind of complete the story of what you're telling without necessarily going into the exact detail of what people are doing, you know, in the in the lawn or in the river or the bankment or whatever that might be. So um, I think as a kind of, if you were to continue this exploration, um, I would work on that and really see what is specific to that region, to that site that you really research, you know, fully um, and how that could be potentially represented in renders. And if not, just assume that they don't need to be there and you let the other stakeholders kind of take a little bit of control of that image and you can just keep your research to the area that you're, you've done all the research about, I guess. And there's always that tension between project and research and how they two mix and what's the kind of correct level. Um, but I think overall you've done an amazing job at kind of highlighting this issue and really getting it all the way um, to, a, to a project that could, you know, potentially be shown in that council or in that neighborhood and see how what the reception might be of the public. Um, Finally, really relevant, the water element. And I think uh, you were talking about this connection between, you know, uh, the nature and this kind of new park that you've generated essentially. Um, and I think water has more to say than that. It can tell a whole lot of stories about re regeneration, about the connection with our bodies, about the connection with the water bodies, uh, connection with the land, with the sky. Like there's so many things that can happen through water and um, that I think could be explored further and not just as a link, you know, a physical link between these two worlds, but actually as something that kind of unites your story in a bigger sense. Yeah. But thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great work. Gary, would you like to come up and say some words? Yeah. Uh, so much a good job. Very, very well done. And again, the same comments as Mary said. So a year of work probably summed up into 10 slides or something, uh, very comprehensive. And I think the process, the, the, the approach that you have from a very macro to micro elements of scale. So you have this layered approach to design and you have different scales that you're working with, which really helps you ground your research in a way to understand, okay, so what is the big picture? You know that this is the big idea that I wanna, I wanna implement and then keep zooming in to like your site level design where you're saying, so, to be honest, that is exactly where your happiness element comes in, because if you are designing on a master plan or regional level, because it's the scale is so big as an individual or a group as people, we don't really perceive that scale. We're always in a in a more human scale, right? So the final design that you are trying to show is more relatable to us as human beings. And again, uh, I, I think there's also potential for you to look into not just one site, but look at the city as a fabric. And maybe there's a step missing in between where you could have potentially uh, done like a palette or a, or a toolbox of the green elements or green approaches to design, which brings in, uh, you know, the element of happiness or people can take a resort in. For example, it could even be a terrace garden or a, or a balcony garden or a backyard garden. Could even be uh, to the smallest scale, it could even be a planter in your house. I, mean, I know it's a very common thing in houses, but then again, it's a green element. And then you have a holistic approach and a palette to design. Uh, again, it's a very, very complex and dense urban fabric, if I'm not wrong. Bangalore, I've been in Bangalore, but I, I don't really know the urban fabric of Bangalore, especially in, in uh, this tech city that you're talking about. It's a multicultural city. You have people from all around India, mostly yes. come there and live there. And how do you represent these cultures? How do you give a common ground for all these cultures to merge? Because for those of you who are not from India, India is it's very diverse and each state and each, each culture is it's like a different country and so on. And uh, how does landscape really, or the design that you're trying to bring forward really um, boost the, the presence and, and, and belonging in a city fabric like that? Um, another thing that you could have looked at was, again, it's a bit of a higher level of research, maybe syntax and how people move around, where do people really like to spend their time, how they like to spend their time. And 
what happens once these offices shut down in the evening? Where do what happens to these landscape parks? What happens to this master plan? Does it go? Does it close off? Is there a nightlife in Bangalore? How do people use the space at night? Things like that. Um, I, I really like how you use this project or the final level of the project where you did the master plan for the, the park as a common ground for different ecologies to meet. And you had water element, you had farming element. Uh, again, I don't really, I didn't understand what kind of farming. Is it more urban farming? Or do you have the traditional approach to farming where? Uh, it's you know, more like an urban farm where okay. people could uh, grow their own vegetables. Basically, I did certain case studies here where I, in Italy, where I went to different cities and uh, talked to people who had their small allotments in urban farms. Right. And I asked them that, why do you do this? And they told me it just gives, it just acts therapeutic for us in a therapeutic way for us. It just brings us away from the city life on the weekend or on a holiday or on a time whenever we are free. And it just takes us into nature because we are not really close to nature and we can't afford to go to distant places every day or on a regular basis. So this is where we get our connect with nature. Yeah. So that's, that is the essence that I went. Yeah. Uh, because again, the traditional approach to agriculture might not really work there. So yes. yeah, urban farming is the right way to do it. Another question is who takes care of this, right? Who's responsible for making sure that it, it stays the way it should. Uh, and, uh, so, yeah, so, and who, who benefits from it as well? Um, another one was about the graphics. I also had a bit of, um, because it's a Lumion render, if I'm not wrong. Uh, yeah. So I, th I think in projects like this, what I would usually do in a, in a more conceptual approach is you work with some uh, collages, maybe more vignette style, because you're, can't, you're trying to give the author, the viewer, uh, a vision of what you're, what you're intending through your project, rather than being very specific with your master plan, saying this is where people are going to come together. So maybe, you know, work with the planting palette a bit, give a mood of what the space looks like. And then you could have like a like a palette of these spaces. You could have like 10 different collages which says, this is the space where uh, people congregate. This is where you have amphitheater. This is where it's more of a secluded uh, space. You can contemplate, you can do yoga, you can, you can just meditate if you want. This is more of a kid zone where it's a different user group that comes in. This is where uh, you can even you can even work in, in the park. You can have you know because now we we you know about startups like WeWork where people can just uh, uh, hire a space for a day or a month depending on their availability. You know this could be. And what is the future of work? It's also a question, right? Is it the typical office culture or could your urban design promote working within nature in a way? Again, these are just my thoughts, but then just building up on your project. But overall, well done. Uh, and I hope I hope more people find happiness through projects like this. And I hope more projects like this happen in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. Well, would James, sir, would you like to come on on this work? Uh, yeah, I would say a couple of things because I think we're running out of time. I mean, running short. Yeah. Time. Yeah. So I won't repeat uh, what my friends have said. I mean, they're all pretty bad. It. Uh, just wanted to say uh, something. Uh, Gary touched upon is the scale. You know, uh, nature, uh, mainly blue and green, are uh, in their uh, real form are always healthy, and uh, whether mentally, physically, whatever. You are in nature, you feel good. And uh, this blue green stuff in the city level to zonal to regional, original to zonal to you know local and private have their different connotations. And uh, I, what I face that we all, we all in the college outside draw this, uh, these systems of blue and green in a very continuous, lovely looking drawings. You know, they go through the city everywhere. And in practically, it becomes a big problem, especially in an existing situation. If you're making a new town and uh, green, you know, then it's possible. So I think the challenge had been, I had guided one guy that how to apply this diagram of continuous uh, greens and blues and actually apply to a dense locality and how do you do it, which really involved underground pipe, which is also a blue line, but not visible, you know. And similarly, uh, you know, little parks and playgrounds, which you were also showing and regional parks, you know, open spaces are there. Delhi cities, most cities and newer areas are really green, whether it's Bangalore or Delhi, anywhere you take. Uh, we, we have no dearth of greenery as such. So if we are to connect them, you know, in a system, this connection does two things. One is you can move through them if they're connected. 
Now these things can flow through them, they're connected, okay? So the flow part is the water part of it. Green thing, sometimes I ask my students, why do you think the green spaces should be connected? Okay, animals can go through, but there's no animal in the most of these cities. So why do you connect it, you know? Why this lovely, everybody says all green spaces should be connected. So now that connection has its own connotation, so one has to look at that. So all I'm in summary trying to tell is a very important thing to provide water and greenery, which is healthy, no doubt, you know. So in a city level, if you're talking about health, you can talk about pollution, you know. You know, in, in various levels. But when you come to your neighborhood little park or little, uh, you know, uh, garden of yours, and uh, so there's a different, uh, your garden did not be connected to anything. Even the park did not be connected to the next park with a park. It can be connected with a road, with a footpath. Or it's, it's as much green with a row of trees. So anyway, what I'm saying is diagrams to convert to a realistic drawing, which functions same as our concept is. You know? uh, and, uh, and more practically and doable way and managing way, so that some of our clients and listeners somehow throw us out sometimes. Well, ah, these are all drawings that can never be done. So we have to be very careful about that. We always, public meetings you face, it's very easy people to throw us out by just showing a couple of problems, you know. It can't be done, can't be done, can't be done, you go away. So uh, we, we, at certain level, we have to be uh, sort of careful about that. But we can be only careful when you bring out thesis like this, you know. And one can sit on it and keep improving forever. But improving is one thing, and making it uh, doable, implementable, and, and uh, realistic is a, a, another thing. Like this uh, urban farming we are talking about, it is a very cultural thing, you know. In a richer country, they do it for mental peace, and in the poorer country, they do it for food. And one of my, one of my IT rich friend in Gurgaon told me that I am doing urban farming, but I am growing uh, cow fodder. I mean, it's nothing but a cheap, tall grass, very easy to, the wild grass, very easy to grow. Just sprinkle the seeds and they will grow about five, six feet. Very green, beautiful smell. And uh, he said, I get my health concerned things with this much better than if I grow a couple of vegetables because I can always buy them in the market. It's not going to do anything. So what I'm saying, this green thing is different or the farming is different because you picked up farming somewhere. So I just, uh, I, I have my, Big doubt about small time urban farming doesn't do anything, frankly speaking, unless you really in urban area, but you have to scale it up. Uh, otherwise, it's, otherwise, your, otherwise your eggplants will cost you know, 10 times more than what is available in the street. Anyway, thank you. Thank you. I, I, all the praises you have got from these other two colleagues of mine, I endorse them. I didn't just repeat them. Oh, it's not a problem because I have answers to all your doubts and all your questions, but I don't think we have so much time because everything- We'll discuss in the end, and you may put up with it sometime. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's actually yeah. not picking up anything that you haven't done or uh, questioning or doing things. But it's just a discussion to you know add on and discuss on. I'm sure you can answer them in another forum when this question comes. In yeah. fact, I didn't ask any question. Anyway, go ahead. Thank you, Somitra, for presenting.